Okay, I think this time I got it. I actually tried recording this like twice and I screwed up both times, so hopefully third time's a charm. So, last time we left off, I showed you guys the advance system, which is effectively like um, area grab in Mega Man Battle Network. And as you can see here, I've done a couple of things um, kind of on the back end. Well, first, I've created two separate um, player objects. So if you go down here, we can see that there's a player one and player two now. And I actually opted to do that. So we're going to have a left side player and a right side player. And it'll be a 50 50 chance depending on how you join the server later on. So it'll be more akin to a fighting game than like Battle Network where you're always on the left side. The reason I chose to do that was because it was easier to code. Um, it was easier to implement different things. It'll be easier um, when we get to networking because I don't have to flip and mirror every single action. It just seemed to make more sense. Um, it also influenced a couple of other design ideas that I'll explain in a little bit. But um, aside from that, um, the different movement scripts, I have attack scripts and the advance scripts. Um, and they're all separate objects now, so players can control different things. Uh, before, I had a problem of mirroring, which it wasn't really a problem. I chose to do that because I wanted to have a unified script. And now that's true, but I've just isolated them. So now we can have whoops, you know, just one character move or not. Did I just hit the wrong thing? I think I hit the wrong thing. I hit the wrong thing. <laughs> so let's take that off the prefab. Let's do that on the actual character that's in play. So we're going to... Um, actually, let's do player one this time because we're so used to having player one. Um, so we're going to take off these for the time being. Oops. So now we have player two moving around and they can demonstrate advance on player two. And as you can see, all of that is working exactly the way you would expect it to work. So back off, goes away, back off, goes away. So other than that, the biggest thing that I was going to say I would finish up is the combat system. So I did a very, very fundamental combat system. I used attacks that I felt were core to gameplay mechanics. Um, so there are only three attacks right now. And there is no card system yet. There is no um, custom return bar yet. None of that stuff. I did the basics, so I did very basic attacks that I felt would build the foundation for combat. I did hits and hit stun, damage calculation, um, invincibility frames, and a death animation. So that's pretty much all we're going to get right now. So without further ado, um, I don't know if I showed you guys this, but um, the pike is the first thing. So on the bottom, whoa, we have something that isn't referenced here. Oh, it's because I turned off the attack list, I think, on player one. Um, that shouldn't be a big deal later. I'll do, I'll do another run after this and show you guys that the error is only because I turned stuff off. Um, but yeah, so the first thing was the pike, which is just like a stab, and damage values for now are temporary, so the 800 is how much is left right now, so like, that's not much. Oh, that was only a one-time deal, so, okay, cool. So, um, yeah, he has 800 health right now, as you can see on the bottom. I can just do that over and over and stab the crap out of him, but you guys get tired of that. Second thing would be the cannon. So as you can see here, I actually fire a cannon off my hands. You can see the animation on the side. And there's the pike. And then lastly, and my favorite one, is the sword. And the sword is pretty simple as well. As you can see, it has 100 health left, and I'll save that for a bit. But um, as far as attacks and animations go, um, I had a couple of themes in mind. I, they had to be quick, they had to be swift, it had to be... Um, and they had to show exactly what was going on. So like the pike... The pike is like a long sword in Mega Man Battle Network. It kind of comes out and hits two squares, the hitboxes are these two right here, and it was just really quick, really easy, it was one giant hitbox, the player um, is encapsulated in this animation, so there's no cancelling or anything. Um, also another thing, while attacking, you cannot move, unless specified otherwise, but um, so far I haven't made any attacks that will let you move, but it, it's a variable that I can turn on and off. Um, the cannon has a moving hitbox, which you know travels across the screen, and then the sword actually plays the animation, and then it has a hitbox um, separate to it. So that's that. Um, the hitboxes I made in these cases um, either separate or attached because it's a little more modular. Um, it gives my attacks a little more customization and I can actually turn them on and off. Um, I could have them, the hitboxes get destroyed if my character is interrupted. So if I'm attacking and my character gets hit, I can have it so the hitbox breaks, which will be useful for some attacks, so on and so forth. Um, as you can see earlier, there were invincibility frames, which I'll show you just kill off the character now and show you guys. So. The death animation takes place and the game is over. I don't have like a victory animation or anything yet, it's just that. But um, going back to this, as you can see here, whenever you get, oh, I have to reset everything, that's right. Um, but 
Um, different attacks will have different hit stun animations, and there are three currently. There's a minuscule, which I haven't implemented yet, which is like if you get tapped for like one damage or something, you won't get hit, you'll just flicker. Uh, there's a light hit, where if you get hit, you'll get stunned for, I think it's a half second, or two seconds? Yeah, I don't know, we'll find out. And then, I think it's a half second. And then the last one will give you like a two second invincibility, and that's if you get hit really hard. That way you can chain attacks, or you can just, you know, have a finisher. So on and so forth. Um, let's just turn off player two now. So player two isn't going to move or attack. So we're going to turn off that. We're going to turn off that. Oh wait, we don't want the list. We want the player attack. What am I doing? Okay. So all that being done. Oh, and advance. So so now, as you can see here, the light attacks consist of the cannon, which has a. You can see like the small, like small little flicker, and you can actually get hit multiple times. So I can like do that and then that. Oops. Or I can mess up. Uh, and then the last one is the pike. So when I do this. I actually can't hit him until the next thing. So, oops, and I killed him. <laughs> so, that's that. Um, that's pretty much all the combat I have now. Before I move on to the card system, and I honestly think the card system won't be as bad as I make it out to be, but before I move on to that, I'm actually going to do networking first, just for a little sense of personal fulfillment and um, for the sake of the game itself, because this is a multiplayer game, and I feel like having a strong multiplayer foundation is, well, important. So. I'm going to move on to that and make sure that it is as stable as possible and I want to crank out as many features as I can so that when I do implement a card system and when I do implement other gameplay features, the network is fully supported. So that's going to be next. It's not going to be that exciting compared to the other stuff. I feel like once the card system is in, then the game is pretty much going to be in full motion and I'm just going to go nuts with it. But for now, networking is going to be really boring, so the next couple of weeks are going to be kind of lame. And then once that's done, once the card system's done, the progress is going to go wild. So that's that. Um, a couple of other things. Uh, where is it? My mock-up of a GUI. So this pain in mind of this. This is all tile stuff. The tile colors are actually going to change. I don't really want mint and pink. Those are just placeholder colors. I mentioned that earlier. But um, over here, this is pretty much like it's not colored in. I was I made this like relatively quickly, but this is the type of guided user interface, I said guided, graphics user interface that I wanted. The turn bar would start in the middle and it'll go out similar to Mega Man and it'll go up here and to the right and once it's complete either player can hit the turn button and then you know get your cards for the next turn. This will be a, for a summon point where basically you can call in different units or objects uh, to diversify the game. I haven't really talked about that and I'm really not gonna until we get to the card system. So once the card system is built and I start building more cards and I actually create um, actual gameplay, then, well, strategic gameplay, I guess, then, you know, we'll go from there. Um, this is just a placeholder for number slots. I want the numbers probably look something like that, but I don't want them gray. Player one, player two. And over here, I'm gonna have where the elements are. So whenever the card system is built and I create the alignment system is what I'm calling it, uh, this is where it'll go. So when it changes from like empty, I don't know what I'm gonna call it the null type. I might just call it null. Um, and then when it changes to electric, fire, water, it'll be displayed up here as well as on your character's wings. Um, I wanted palette swaps in the game, so like you could change your color so everyone wouldn't be mint all the time. So because of that, the helmet will not change according to your type. It'll just be a personal preference. So if you want like a blue, then you can have a blue helmet, and it won't mean your ice type. That's why I'll have this giant thing here, so you'll easily know. Um, I haven't worked on a background yet, but I have a bunch of ideas for various backgrounds. So, that'll be a thing as well. And finally, last update, and let me turn my music off. Um, shout out to my vibologist, aka sound producer, aka Micah, aka Hidden Apache, aka Mr. AKA. Um, he has made a bunch of different sounds and songs, and I'm going to go ahead and show you this one. This is going to be our battle theme. It's still um, in the works, but... Um but, um, yeah, so that's that. Um, Mike has done a great job with producing music. Um, oh, that's another thing I need to talk about. Um, my team. So, uh, actually, I'm going to be quiet because it's my favorite part. Well, it's upcoming. I'm weird. <laughs> Whatever, I'm gonna shut up. Just listen to this. I'm excited. <laughs> okay, so, um, anyways, I've actually decided to assemble a team because 
somewhere along the road I wanted to accomplish more with this project, but I knew I couldn't do it alone, and I decided what would I do in order, like what do I have to do in order to get a team, and the hardest thing about that is who would want to team up with a novice programmer. So to mitigate that, I had to figure out what would be in it for them, and I tried to find people that were interested in games and wanted to get into the gaming industry, but had little experience. Um, but just because they had little experience doesn't mean they didn't have talent. And there were a bunch of people that I had in mind for this, and I ultimately came up with five people. So that now we're, I guess we're a quote-unquote team of six. I put them on a challenge to... Oh, I'm gonna go back here, actually, because it just looks bland. You guys are staring at my wallpaper. Um, I put them on... I gave them a challenge to do a bunch of things. I gave them homework, essentially, to do it to the best of their ability before the networking system is done. So they have about two or three weeks, you know, presumably, uh, to get it finished. But... Uh, I got a bunch of friends who are interested in coding to learn coding. Um, I've got one of my artist friends working on mock-up art, and uh, one of my other friends who's in the 3D modeling and animation doing that. And I'm basically testing their skill and their ability to see if they are, um, well, as dedicated as I am as this. And it's a little biased because obviously it's my project, but um, I've explained the personal benefits of this, and a lot of them are interested in getting in the gaming industry to begin with, so this just made sense. Um, so yeah, my team and I are working on a couple of other stuff, but um, the team isn't official yet until the networking system is done, and until I agree upon, you know, their their actions, because I, just because I chose them doesn't mean they're 100%, you know, qualified or something like that. Now I sound like a boss, and, you know, we're, it's kind of weird. But, um, but yeah, our future goal is basically to get this game out and a couple of other ones as well, just as programming experience. So when Trowing is finished, um, I'll probably just be handling it on the back end and then I'll be helping the other guys with their projects on the side or something along those lines, but that's for way, way, way in the future. This project is still in full motion and that's where my focus is. So that's pretty much um, all of my updates. Um, oh, speaking of updates, all day yesterday and the day before and today, the day before that, were bug fixing and debugging. I spent hours debugging, and it sucked. So this was supposed to be done on Friday. It is currently Sunday night, and that's just how how newbie programming goes. There were a bunch of things that I didn't see coming, and it kicked me in the ass. So all that being said, I'll say this one more time. The next couple of weeks are going to be boring because it's just going to be networking and network talk. You won't really see too much of uh, TriWing in terms of like you know gameplay or um, progress because I'll just be doing network tutorials but um the idea is that once I understand networking tutorials I'm gonna create a server and a client inside the game so that this game will be able to play online so once the tutorials are over I'll create um, a network mode of this so I'll be able to stab somebody in the f like in the face of the spear via Wi-Fi I guess um, but uh, yeah that's it guys stay tuned um, I'll be sure to try to keep my posts interesting for sure, but I uh, hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know what you guys think of this game. Let me know what you want to see, what you think I can improve on. Um, just, you know, general advice and feedback, uh, good comments, critical comments, I, you know, I'll take it all. So until then guys, I'll see you all later. Peace.